welcome brothers and sisters to day five. Oh, it's been wonderful, it's been glorious. Day five of this special program titled The Redeemed of the Law. We have been waiting on the Lord with fasting and prayer. This is the fifth day. We started on Sunday, which makes it the sixth, six, six days now, uh, but fasting and prayer started on Monday, and today is the fifth day. It's been glorious. We give God thanks. Today, our focus is offering and sacrifice and the blessings of the redeemed the redeemed of the Lord, offering and sacrifice, and the blessings of the redeemed of the Lord. To just recap for the sake of those who may just be joining us, we have established, according to the word of God, that the law of imputes says that outcome or result, output depends on the impute. And that the imputes of this world that we see today came from Satan bringing sin into the world through Adam. And from there, man fell. And sin brought death and the associated evil. Or put it this way, sin and the devil and Satan brought death and all the associated evil. That's the state of the world. And everyone that is born into this world is born into Adam and is a sinner. The Bible says that very clearly. We saw that in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. You need to read the whole of Romans chapter 5. It's very rich. Now, God, by his love, brought Jesus Christ his son to change that impute. So Jesus has, God has redeemed us through his son, Jesus Christ. The offering and the sacrifice for sin and for our deliverance from the power of Satan. So once the sin and Satan have been dealt with. Mankind, therefore, has been restored to the original fellowship and blessing that God created man for and intended for man. When God wanted to create man, in Genesis chapter uh, 1, verse 26, the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our own image. Let's quickly look at that so we can establish that original desire of God. Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them, 28. Then God blessed them. This is the point. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fuel the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every creeping thing, over every living thing, rather, that moves on the earth. This is what God's original plan was. After God created man, the Bible says, and God looked and saw that everything he did was very good. But Satan came, deceived Adam. Adam disobeyed God, which is sin, and sin, sin came into the world and all the trouble. But Jesus Christ, God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, and has redeemed us. So we looked at sin issues. We look at the issues of a power of darkness. We look at covenant 
We look at the kingdom authority that we have been given. Hallelujah. And today we want to look at the sacrifice himself, where our focus is the blessing that comes through this. So Hebrews 10, 1 to 10, we will read that very quickly and then a few other scriptures and we'll bring out the key point. In the course of this study, again, we have dealt with how many laws? Two laws, the law of impure and output, like I've just stated, Satan and sin brought out what? I mean, Satan, yes, and sin brought out death, right? And the accompanying issues, sickness, diseases, all that. So if you change the output, I mean, if you change the input, you get a different outcome. So that input of Satan and sin have been changed through Jesus Christ. And now what do we have? Health, eternal life, glory be to God, prosperity of the Lord. Hebrews 10, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually every year, continually year by year rather, make those who approach perfect too. For then would they not have ceased to be offered for the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. So there was a shadow. And what did the shadow do? Offer sacrifice for sin. Three. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance, there is a reminder of sins every year. For, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Five, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. So this is where we take our focus from. Can you see that? Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offering and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to, to do your will, O God. I take that verse 7 again, because this is key. Then I said, behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. Eight. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Verse 9, then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. Ten, by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once. For all. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, the teaching this evening is simple. It is to highlight, I want to use the word highlight, two key points that this text makes. Point number one is that Jesus Christ was given a special body. To carry and deal with the issue of sin and the power of the devil, the power of Satan. Special body. Oh, if you can appropriate this in your life, if you can understand this, if you can, how do I express it, beloved brothers and sisters? If you can make this a reality, in your life, you will see the manifestation. Glory be to God. That's point number one. Jesus was given a special body. Now, and that special body, as you can see here in verse 10, he said, by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body. So that body was offered, sacrificed for you for me, for the whole world, for our sanctification, 
once and for all. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look at, oh, I did talk about uh, two laws we dealt with, so let me just mention the second law. I've mentioned the first and went in. The second law is the law of servitude. Servitude. To whom you yield yourself, his servant, uh, to obey his servant you become. To whom you yield yourself. Whatever you submit yourself to, that thing becomes Lord over you. Whoever you submit yourself to, to serve as a master, he becomes Lord over you. Praise the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Romans 6, 16. So that's how the devil has authority in this world. Adam submitted to the devil. The devil does not have any right over the earth, over you. No, 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 he does not. And you must know this. That's why we dealt with the kingdom authority. It is what Adam submitted to him. Adam, whom God gave the power, gave the authority over the earth, as you heard there, and God said, fill the earth and subdue it, handed it to the devil. So the devil rules by what we call the law of servitude. And so God then taught us and said, resist the devil, because he doesn't have the power over this earth. He, he rules by authority that Adam gave him. And so whoever comes into this world, the devil already has the authority over that person, by the Adamic nature that is in that person and by the body of sin. But when Jesus was at the body, the special body that was given to Jesus was offered, that body took away sin and everything that came with that sin. And you and I have been restored to the kingdom of God. God now reigns over us. Jesus who offered that body Reign is the ruler over the kingdom of God, and we are under his authority. Oh, glory be to God. I believe from now on, you will now look at the scripture from the point of the authority that you have, the blood of Jesus that has washed you, the name of Jesus that has been given to you. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 53, 4 and 5. You already know that scripture very well. Isaiah 53, 4 to 5, to continue what this body has done for us. Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he has borne our griefs, born on that body bore our griefs. So God actually put our sin, made Jesus sin for, for us. Just like through Adam, everyone who is born into this world becomes a sinner. Through Jesus Christ, that body was made a sin. All the sins were put on that body. Sickness and diseases and all that came with that sin was put on that body. And that body carried it away. Hallelujah. So surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. So God himself afflicted, put our sins, our sickness, our diseases, all upon that body that God gave him, that special body, that body that was given to be sacrificed. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. So you can see here, number one, transgressions, he took it. Number two, iniquities, he took it in that body. Number three, peace, our peace was broken in that body. And our sickness were taken away by his stripes, he was healed. This is corroborated in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Matthew 8, 17. I believe you know the scripture. Matthew 8, 17, just confirm this same scripture. So I'll just direct you to read. Okay, I'm there. Let, let's read it. Matthew 8, 17. When evening, I start from 16. Sorry, Ma yes, Matthew 8, 17, I start from 16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirit with a word and healed all who were sick. 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took 
He himself did what? Took our infirmities and bore our sickness and bore our sicknesses. Praise the name of the Lord. So at this point, I want to bring the third law that we must remember, the law of substitution. So what Jesus Christ did, this special body that was given was given to be a substitute. Just like this uh, Hebrews 10 started, he said, for the law having a shadow of good things, good things to come. So the law actually taught the principles, but the law itself was insufficient. So there was a practice in the law and the law that it's called the sacrifice of the scapegoat. The sacrifice of the scapegoat. What happened? Let's look at Leviticus chapter 16, 8 to 10 very quickly, briefly, and then we'll come back and elaborate on the law of substitution and we'll go into prayer. Amen. Le Leviticus 16. The scapegoat, we'll read from verse 8. Yeah. Okay, I'm there. Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the Lord fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. So this scapegoat will carry the sin atonement and will escape into the wilderness and you will know some people still practice this today even the devil native doctors they will tell people to bring something and that's why you have to be careful with people who tell you to make an offering, offering, offer something before something happens. Because Jesus has been offered for us. The condition under which you now give gift, and please give gift, please give, give. God wants us to give. Give to men of God, give brothers and sisters, give to the poor, give to the needy, give, but it must come from you, from an understanding of what God commands you to do. But when people are the one telling you, give, give, then something will happen. Be careful. Be careful about what exchange might happen. Okay, enough of that. So some practices, uh, some shrines will always ask you to bring something, bring gifts, bring even sometimes goats, bulls. And so they will carry as the scapegoat. So Jesus himself, carried that special body carried as we saw there in isaiah chapter 53 4 and 5 god put our sins on him put our sicknesses our afflictions our every thing that the devil and sin brought into this world god put it on that body and that body was sacrificed for us and glory be to god by the power of God, Jesus died, died, buried, and the power of God transformed him. And he rose from the dead. And so that body has been sacrificed for you, sacrificed for me. He's carried our sickness, our diseases, our sin. He has been made a sin for us. Glory be to God. Of course, you know 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5.21, what does it say? It says, it, co it confirms this, that Jesus has been made 
a sin for us. We have become the righteousness of God. He who knew no sin was made a sin for us. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So the law of substitution, as I told you, is still being practiced. Operates. Jesus took our place and became a sin. That body became a sin for us. The punishment that we are supposed to have carried, Jesus carried them all. And what happens? Look at that verse 21 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 again. For he, who is the he? God. For God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The law of substitute. Jesus has taken your place. Jesus has taken my place. And everyone that comes into Christ, Jesus, this substitution takes place. Jesus takes that body that was sacrificed for you and I, takes our place, and then we receive from God what? The righteousness that Jesus, who was sinless, perfect, brought into this world. This is the law of substitution. Hallelujah. And so today, tell that sin, Jesus took you away from me. Tell that sickness and disease, Jesus took. Jesus, that body has been crucified, sacrificed for me. Glory be to God. Oh, time will fail us. But let's just look at... Um, 1 John 2, verse 2, 1 John 2, 2. 1 John 2, 2, you know that. Scripture, 1 John 2, 2, what does it say? 1 John 2, verse 2. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. The sub propitiation, what is it? Substitute. He is a substitute for our sins. You also see this in Romans chapter 3, verse 25. You can also look at 24 and 25. Let's just look at 1 John 4, 10. Uh, 1 John 4, 10, what does it say? In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the substitute for our sins. Wow. 1 Corinthians 5, 7, what does it say? That Christ, our Passover lamb, has been crucified. Our Passover has been crucified for us. Christ, our Passover. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, what does it say? Therefore, put out the old living, that you may be a new lamb, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Revelation 3, 8, uh, Revelation 13, 8, rather, you know, the Bible says, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, this has been God's plan for our redemption. We have been redeemed. Shout, I am the redeemed of the Lord. By the special body given to Jesus, God has substituted all my pain and sorrow and suffering and sin and sickness and diseases. Jesus has taken them away. All our afflictions, Jesus has taken them away by that special body. Now I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. So today our focus, therefore, is since Jesus has done all this for us, a blessing has been provided for us. We have been restored. So what are those blessings? I told us to list seven of them. Seven. I believe you have listed your own seven. The special body given to Jesus for offering and sacrifice for sin and by his death 
destroying the power of Satan, did the work for our redemption. And this Jesus, having done all that, was raised from the dead by the power of God. And he is now seated in heavenly places, seated at the right hand of God, having all power, all authority, all dominion, and preeminence over all creations of God and our lives. We have been lifted to sit with him in that heavenly place, having authority in his name, hallelujah, to rule with him as kings and priests under him under God. Glory be to God. Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this exciting? So now, brothers and sisters, you have to make a choice to make a change. You have to make a choice to make a change. You have to make a choice to make a change for the manifestation of God in your life. For all things pertaining to life and godliness have, have, have been given to you and I to live. We want to pray. But before we pray now, I want you to review your list because we are going to pray first according to your list. Your list, seven. If, is there anyone short in your life? That is the change you must make. I quickly go through my own list that I have put down. The blessing that through this substitution that Jesus has made. He has become the propitiation for my sin. Has, have come to me and they are more than this. I just wrote seven. Number one for me is righteousness because God has forgiven me all my sins, all my iniquities, all my transgressions, errors, mistakes, weakness, everything. Number one for me is righteousness. Number two for me is kingdom authority. God has given me, has delivered me from the power of darkness and has given me authority in the name of Jesus to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. God has delivered me from the power of Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Number three for me is peace. Jesus is my prince of peace. Hallelujah. Jesus is my prince of peace. Isaiah 9, 6. His name is called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus said, my peace, I give to you my peace. I live with you, not as the world giveth, give I. Number four for me is prosperity, prosperity. I want us to read this one by the law of his substitution. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine. I want us to read it. Please open it because you really need to read scriptures like this and stand. Oh, by the substitute, you know, part of what sin brought is poverty because there was a curse. So prosperity means the curse has been removed and we can now prosper. Removal of poverty and the curse that brought poverty. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. 8 verse 9, read it with me. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes. For your sake, he became poor that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Glory be to God. The true riches. Jesus, though he was rich, substituted his riches and took our poverty and removed it. How do I know that? Look at Galatians. Look at Galatians chapter 3 again, 13 and 14. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us by this redemption. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Every curse has been removed from your life, from my life. To, in the name of Jesus, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. 14, that the blessing, the original Abrahamic covenant of blessing, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Glory be to God. Number five for me is joy. Joy. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 10, which has been our text for this special program. 
the redeemed of the Lord, the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with shouting of joy and shall carry upon his head the everlasting joy. Joy and gladness shall fill our lives. Jesus has brought us joy. Number six for me is fellowship with God through his Holy Spirit. We have been restored to that fellowship. Hallelujah. So I can hear God. I can fellowship with God, with the Father, and with the Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit that is with me. Fellowship with God and his Son, Jesus Christ, Father and the Son, through the Holy Spirit that has been given to, to us. Number seven for me is eternal life is guaranteed. Eternal life. God has given us eternal life. According to 1 John chapter 5, Verse 11, this is the testimony that God has given us. It did not say God will give us. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He that has a son has life. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have Eternal life, have everlasting life. Glory be to God. It's time to pray. Lift up your voices and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the special body that you gave to Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for obeying the Father and offering yourself for me. And thank you for all the blessings that that special body has brought to me. I have been redeemed by that special body. I have been forgiven. And now I have been made the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ by that special offering. Thank you, almighty God, for the kingdom authority that you have given to me through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, O Prince of Peace, for the peace you have given me, the prosperity, the joy, restoring me to fellowship with you, Almighty Father, and Jesus, the Son of the living God, through the help of the Holy Spirit that you have given to us, given to me. Heavenly Father, thank you for the eternal life that you have given to me, given to us. Go ahead and just keep, keep thanking God for all these blessings. Keep thanking God. Go ahead as the prayer. Thank God for all these blessings. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for healing my body. Thank you for healing me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything that, that, that sin brought into this world, brought into my life. You have dealt with it. You have given me healing. You have delivered me from the power of Satan, from the power of darkness. You have given me authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and give God thanks. Give God thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now pray and say, Heavenly Father, let all these blessings manifest in my life now and overtake me whatever is short whatever has been short today right now let it come to fulfillment in the name of jesus i receive it now through the special body of jesus that was crucified for me the offering and sacrifice for me the substitute for my life the propitiation for me I receive the blessing of God. Anything that God Almighty has provided for me, any blessing God has provided for me, manifests in my life now. The blessing of the righteousness of God, the blessing of divine health manifests in my life now. I am healed. I have health in the name of Jesus. The blessing of peace, the blessing of joy, the blessing of prosperity manifests in my life. The blessing of fellowship with God and hearing from God, hearing the voice of God, hearing from the Spirit of God manifests in me now. In the name of Jesus, 
the blessing of eternal life and all that that eternal life has brought for me manifest in my life. Go ahead and pray, pray. Whatever you have on your list, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Whatever you have on your list, pray now, for it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, turn that same prayer. We're going to pray for our family. Say, Father God, let the blessing of this special body of Jesus Christ that was sacrificed for me and my family and actually the whole world, let that blessing manifest in my household now. Manifest upon my wife, manifest upon my children in the name of Jesus. And go ahead and ask those specific blessings that you desire for they shall come to pass. Go ahead and ask, go ahead and ask, go ahead and ask. Ask in the name of Jesus. Ask in the name of Jesus. Ask in the name of Jesus. The mediator of the new covenant. Go ahead and ask. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, our King. Thank you, our Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, we are going to agree with one another. And that's why you have to take one more minute and ask this blessing. Whatever you have put in your own list, ask now. Go ahead and ask. Heavenly Father, the blessing of the redeemed by the everlasting covenant of the blood of Jesus, by the kingdom authority that you have given to me through Jesus Christ, the king over the kingdom of God, the ruler over the kings of the earth. Father, let all your blessings, your goodness, your mercies, your favors overtake me, overtake my household, overtake my brothers and sisters, everyone that is connected upon this program, upon this platform, in the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and ask. In Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Let's bring our requests our, and prayer to a close. Oh, glory be to God. We want to agree. Are you ready? Agree with me by saying amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we agree that by the special body of Jesus Christ that was offered and sacrificed for us, that special body that you have given us a substitute for all our sins through which you have delivered us from the power of sin and the power of the devil, the power of Satan. And you have restored us to yourself and translated us into your kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the son of your Lord. Backed up by your covenant, the covenant of the blood of Jesus that you have made with us to be a God to us forever. And we are your children to bless us according to the original everlasting Abrahamic covenant of blessing. Father, we ask, let every blessing of the redeemed of the Lord, the blessing of your redemption and restoration in our lives take place now. We agree, let that blessing manifest in us and through us in the name of Jesus. Father, from now on, we will be your vessel of gold, your vessels of diamond, your vessels of platinum, whatever is the highest level of vessels that you can use, Lord. We will be that vessel. Use us for your glory. And let your will be fulfilled in our lives and through us. All of us connected here, we agree that you will do this in our lives. And at the end of our days here on earth, Lord, we will spend eternity with you forever. In the mighty name of Jesus.
We agree, Lord, let this be the portion of our families, our husbands, our wives, our children, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we agree that let this be the portion of all your children, whoever will come to accept this special sacrifice of the body of Christ that was crucified for all humankind. And as many, oh God, that will come to hear this word, this message, let this blessing be their portion and overtake them. Let your great prosperity manifest in our lives, now and forevermore. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Fill us with your everlasting joy. Let our head, our heads carry your everlasting joy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have agreed. Amen. Bye-bye.